Greetings everybody. Welcome to what's going to probably be my first of this sort of video. Okay, so let's get started. You saw the title. So, the first thing you're going to need to do is buy Airmec Prime if you have not already. To do that, you would either click a notification that would appear up here for you if uh, if you haven't used that up yet or you would go into the shop click bundles I believe It'd be either in uh, booster bundles I believe in bundles you can buy the Air Mac Prime pack or you can just buy yourself a Prime Cube it's pretty inexpensive, uh, about $15 went on sale I believe it was, uh, normally I guess it's supposed to be around 30 half the price of a new game. Anyway, once you do that, you just go to the shop uh, and purchase yourself the map editor. It was for not that many kudos, I mean, once you buy Airmac Prime, you're overloaded with kudos anyway. So just use a shovel, also purchased in the shop, dig up a land, place this bad boy down, and let's go in. Now, I won't be giving a complete step-by-step -step guide, but I'll be showing just a general tutorial of how things work here. So, you'll be greeted by this. You can't do anything with this. In fact, uh, the, most of the button options up at the top right are completely missing from this screen. What you need to do first is come over here to File and drop New. Then you will end up with this. Now sure, yeah, this is playable. You could spawn over, well, everyone spawns in the middle, and you could fight each other. It's totally doable, but before we get into any real editing and making something, I'm going to just go over the basics with you guys. Okay, so first up here we get the tools. Uh, this is the cursor, this allows you to select stuff. This is the moving tool. With this tool, you can move stuff around. This is the rotation tool. When you have an object selected, you can turn it. And this is the draggy tool. With it, you can select a bunch of stuff. And I don't know what this does. Hey, I'm still learning myself. I only got these tools like three, four days ago. Okay, so before we do anything that we may regret, first let's come over here and learn about all this stuff. Now, first off here is to add new stuff. This button is going to be for adding any pre-existing units you want in the map. Keep in mind, it, I believe, takes from every unit type in the game. Or it could just take from every unit you have unlocked. I don't believe it is that, though, because the Gothic Goliath is here and I have yet to purchase that. So I think it is indeed every unit you have, or uh, every unit that is uh, in the game. except for certain enemies that only appear on Warzone maps. Next, we got props. Props are like all the, like the boxes, the houses, the trees, all the scenery stuff. The, in here is also where you will find the all-important object 
the sockets. So, keep that in mind. You can also find pads here where you could bunker down your infantry. Now, prefabs. This contains all the bases and outpost types. Here you can find pretty much every outpost in the game, and even some that were made for beta testing. So, next, force volumes, don't know what these do, although that's kind of creepy. That needs to get, that needs to be gotten rid of. Anyway, game locations, circle. I will be going more over this item when I do my how to make a war zone map uh, tutorial, but there it is. It's a circle. Circles are made to be markable locations that you can have events happen in. The circle is tied very deeply to the event and action setup. Now, combos not nothing listed here. I am unsure how to work this at this time. If I figure it out, I will make a video on it. Power-ups, likewise. I have no clue what this is for yet. So, now we go to the next tool. This is the wrench. This is pretty much the editing tool. You can use it to gain, uh, to look at all the information, position ob of objects. You can look at, like, what team uh, an object is for. You can change its rotation. And on a lot of things, you can not only manually change their position with number, but on units and some objects, you can actually change the scale size. You can also use this tool to highlight an object and press the delete key on your keyboard and it goes away. It's a very handy tool you will be coming back to more often than not. This tool here I'm going to go over with later. Instead, we're going to go straight into the landscaping tool. The landscaping tool is as it said, this helps you change the lay of the land. To create new land in the void, you simply click and drag to expand the map, or right click and drag to delete it. Now you can single click a tile that is of land and then you can click any tile in the sector that will allow you to change what it is. You can also come down here to see different tile types. Here we're selected on flat. We can go to hills and suddenly we have every small cliff style of block to build our map with as we please. The rotation tools allow you to turn the block. These, will allow you, these tools here will allow you to scroll between pages of items if items have more than one page. This tool allows you to lower the selected block. This tool allows you to raise the selected blocks. To select more than one block at a time, hold the control key and select the multiple blocks you want to change.
you can then interact with all the blocks simultaneously. To switch to a different tile, click where it says Canyon originally. You can go to the Boreal tile set. You can go to the Mountain tile set. You can go to the Spiral Mountain set, which is very much for advanced players as it's very limited. The Valley tile set and the virtual tile set which I personally really don't like. Now if we go back I will show you the next big thing the world tab. The world tab allows you to edit things like the global light the size of the map bounds indicated by the blue and green lines this what the radar will show of the map the force box which is the area your air mat can move and the camera which is where you will be able to see when you're moving the Z rotation also changes the angle orientation of the view of the map. Usually you want to do this last. Fog values allow you to edit fog. It's self-explanatory really. Plane zones. The kill plane will heavily damage any air mech or vehicle that crosses into it and the transform plane will force an air mech to transform into air mode if it is entered. You can alter these at will. Map info is very important. Here you get your map name, what's in the skybox, the pregame time, the pregame radius in which you and your allies can move around before the game officially starts, game mode type and game style type. I'll be going more over these when I do other tutorials. For now, the events tab. This controls the events, actions, variables, and script options that happen in your map. These are all very important parts of building a good war zone map, not so much as building a versus map. I will be going over these in much greater detail in Warzone when I make the tutorial. Here you can add events, remove events, and edit events. In the Actions tab you can define, remove actions. You can also add and rename actions. The variables, variables tab you can add, remove, and edit the variables that may occur. Script options, you may import scripts from previous levels. The final tool I will be going over I'm calling this tool pretty much like the landscaper. What it does is you need to set the size of your map. And when you hit generate, it sets the correct shaping and collision detection for your Air Max when you play. This is a very important step in building any map and you definitely want to do this close to the end after you've built all the terrain and put in all the objects.
once you are satisfied with your map you can go to the file menu to save, test, or even publish your map. Publishing your map puts it online for other players to try or you to try with your friends. Testing the map will take you directly into your map for you to test. Saving is self-explanatory. Make sure you do it often or you risk losing everything. They say the best way of learning is to go out and play with it. Good luck out there and I wish to see you on the battlefield.